Hello, and welcome to another quick lesson with me, Jacob Walcock. Today, we're going to take a piece of artwork that you've made already, and we're going to use augmented reality to bring it to life. So what does that mean? Well, here's an example, and you can see a lino cut that I've made of a Cornish chuff, and then you can see the information that I've added around it using augmented reality. You could add your own facts or figures, you could add information about your picture, or you could just add some really cool sculpture and 3D objects coming out of your artwork to make it really come alive. We're going to follow five easy steps to make this work, and the first one is going to be to take your piece of artwork and to bring it onto your iPad as an image. Then, in Reality Composer, we're going to set that image as our anchor point for our augmented reality experience to come alive around. And then, in step number three, we're going to build that experience using text and objects and customising those as well. In step number four, I'll show you how to make this experience come to life using the augmented reality camera. And in step number five, if you want to go further, you can add animations to make your text and objects pop out of the screen. To complete this tutorial, all you're going to need is an iPad with the Reality Composer app installed. If you haven't got it already, jump on the App Store, it's free. And also you're going to want a picture or a piece of artwork that you're going to use to anchor your augmented reality experience onto. When you've got those things ready, let's get started. Okay, first of all, open up the camera app on your iPad and you want to get a photograph of your piece of artwork or your picture. Try and get a really square on photograph, so don't distort it too much, but don't worry if you need to crop it in later because we can do that. So try and get a nice clean photograph, and then tap on that picture to go into the editing mode. From here we're then going to crop our image to make sure that only the actual piece of art is on the screen. And when you've cropped it, you're going to press done. That image is now saved as a photograph but we actually want to put it into the Files app to make it easier to get later. So press the Share button, and then choose Save to Files. You can choose what folder to save your picture into. I'm going to put mine into my Quick Lessons Resources folder, so I can find it easily in a minute or two. And that's it, step number one is complete. I'll wait here while you catch up, and when you're ready we'll go on to step number two together. Now we're going to open the Reality Composer app, and from that home screen you're going to create a new project. Now here you can choose what sort of anchor you want to use, and for today's quick lesson we're going to choose the image anchor. So tap onto there, and that will open up a new workspace for you. Now in the middle you'll see a 3D object and a kind of placeholder of your picture. Tap onto that placeholder first of all, and on the right hand side on the project inspector you'll then see image asset. Tap on choose, and then you're going to find that file that you saved in the last step. So I'll jump onto files, jump into quick lessons resources, and there's my picture. I'm going to add on that, and then tap on it again to select. You'll now see that updates on my Reality Composer canvas. This is great, but the only problem is it's imported it to be much bigger than my actual object is. Now in reality my lino cut is about 30 centimeters wide, but on the screen now it's over a meter. So on that inspector again, we're going to drag those sliders that say physical width and physical height to make it slightly closer to reality. This isn't vital, but it does mean that you can better judge what objects you're adding later on. When you've changed the size, just explore moving around your canvas with one and two fingers. Try and rotate, zoom and pan around, just to get the feel for how Reality Composer works. That will be helpful later. When you're done, tap on that blue object in the middle and then press delete. That means we can start step number three in a minute with a blank Reality Composer interface with just our image anchor waiting in place. OK, take your time here to import your picture, and make sure it's the right sort of size, and when you're ready, step number three will begin shortly. OK, so now it's time to start adding some content around our piece of artwork. And I'm going to start off with some text to title my picture. So press the plus button on the top toolbar, and then scroll down to text. Now when you first import that, you may notice the text is stood up vertically on your piece of artwork. And really, I want it lying flat underneath. So when you tap on that text, you're going to see three coloured arrows, red, green and blue. And this seems a good chance to talk about what they mean. As we're working in 3D space here, each of those arrows will slide your object across the X, Y or Z axes. So if I grab one of those arrows and pull in the direction it's pointing, my text will move in that direction, whether that be up or down, left or right, forwards or backwards. But there's more. If you tap onto one of those arrows, you then get a coloured circle around your object, again on one of those three axes. And if you choose the right coloured circle, and then you rub your finger around the circle, it'll rotate. So I've chosen the red circle here, 
and as I rotate that 90 degrees, you'll see my text is now lying flat on the document. Then I can use the arrow to slide it below my piece of artwork, and now I can use the inspector to change that text to be my title, in this case, Cornish Chuff. Now on the inspector, there are a huge amount of different options to customise that object, and each object has a different set of options, which you'll find out later. For me, I want to make the scale smaller, so that text fits on the page better, and I want to turn off the feature called Word Wrap, which means that the text will all appear on one line, like a title. Then I can start exploring the materials that my label is made of. This could be plastic, it could be metal, it could be terracotta, whatever you want. Some of these materials will let you choose the colour as well, so for example car paint, you can then choose what colour to paint it in, and each one will change how light interacts with it in augmented reality. There's tons here to explore, so do take some time later. For me, I'm going to choose gold as my material because it catches the light really nicely in real life, and then the last thing to do is to change the font to one that I like the look of more. Again, you can explore all these options later, and I'm not going to talk you through them step by step because it's very easy to understand. When I've got one title looking good, I'm going to tap on it and press duplicate, and then I'll make the scale slightly smaller and change the text to be my name. Now I've got a title and a subtitle and it's looking good. Now for my example, I'm going to add some facts about the Cornish Chuff around my piece of artwork, but you may want to add different things. But for me, the starting point is to press the plus button to go back to that object browser, and then to go to the callouts section. From here I'm going to choose that spiky dynamic one because it kind of matches my artwork style, and I'll drag that onto the page just like before. And also just like before, I'm going to rotate it so it's lying flat, and then position it where I want it to be. Always make sure you look at your workspace from different angles, because you can see here that text callout is actually floating quite high above my picture. Now you can have objects floating, and in AR they'll look really cool if they are off the ground level slightly, but I don't want mine floating quite that high, so I'll nudge it down a little bit. Then we can go onto the inspector and we can change the text, we can change the font, we can change the scale and the colour, just like before. Let's duplicate that now, and I'll change the second one to be a different fact and a different colour. One of the really great things about Reality Composer is that on that inspector there are different options for different objects, and one of the options for the callout is to change the position that the speech bubble is actually pointing. That means you can really customise this to exactly what you want. I'm going to race ahead and do that now, and then I can position it where I want it to be. OK, I'm going to jump ahead again now because I'm not going to show you all of those steps again and again and again, but I've now added four different speech bubbles with facts in, and I've added some gold stars as well. I've positioned these around my picture, I've made some flat on the page and some slightly raised, and as you rotate around the canvas you can see exactly how that should look. Take your time here, there's a lot to do in this step, in fact probably you'll spend the most time on this step out of any in this video, so take your time. Great stuff! Make sure you've got your artwork looking really great, add as much information and content as you want to, and we'll go on to step number four when you're ready. We're now going to have a chance to look at that piece of augmented reality artwork in real life. So make sure you've got your actual picture nearby, along with your iPad, and on the top toolbar you're going to press the AR button. That will activate the camera, and as soon as the camera recognises your piece of art, all of those objects that you've placed in Reality Composer should then snap into place over your real life object. It may well be at this point that you notice a few things you want to tweak. So come out of that experience, and then you can reposition things, rescale things, whatever you want to do to make your work look amazing. And then we'll preview it again by pressing the AR button and the play button. Don't forget you can lift up your picture and move it around, and that augmented reality content should follow your piece of art wherever you hold it, which is pretty cool. It may be you're happy to leave the project at this stage if you've managed to complete your AR piece of artwork, but if you want to go further with animations, stay tuned for step number five. To make our augmented reality experience even more dynamic and interesting, we can make our objects appear and disappear at different times. So tap on the Behaviours button on the top toolbar, that's the one I'm pointing to now, and then we're going to add a new behaviour to the object that's currently selected. I'm going to choose Start Hidden, and now at the bottom of my screen you should see some new boxes pop up, with all the different actions for that behaviour in. Now the second box along there shows that objects are going to start hidden, and it will say that it applies to one object, which is the one I initially selected. But if I tap Choose, I can then pick any object I want to be included in that action. So I'm actually going to choose all of my objects, including the title, so that when my experience first starts, you don't see anything at all. So it's a bit like a magic trick. 
Now I'm going to scroll along to the action box called Show, and I'm going to choose this to apply to my title and my subtitle. So I'm going to choose those two objects. And then we can customise how they're going to appear on the screen. I want mine to slide in from below, and I can even choose the distance they slide in from. Choose the duration to make it last perhaps a couple of seconds, and then that part of your augmented reality experience will be animated. But at the moment, that's only our text showing up, nothing else. So next to where it says Action Sequence, press that plus button, and then we're going to choose this to apply to our text boxes next. Again, we're going to choose the objects, we're going to choose how they want to appear, and the duration it will take them to appear. And now we're building out an animation step by step. Reality Composer will read those boxes from left to right, and it will apply those animations as they come along. I'll repeat this process one more time for my stars, but you can do this as many or as few times as you like to make your animation more complex or more simple. When you're done, press the AR button on the top toolbar, and now when you press play, your objects should all disappear, and then they'll start to appear based on those animations you've just created. This step is a little bit fiddly, and it takes a few goes possibly to get it looking great, but by all means go and experiment and see what you can make Reality Composer do. And you know what? That's it! Tutorial complete! Well done for finishing this quick lesson! We've taken a piece of artwork in the real world, and then we've digitalised that onto our iPad. Then, using Reality Composer and the magic of augmented reality, we've added other objects and information which aren't there in the real world, but which are there in the AR world. Then, we've gone even further and added animations to make this really pop and come to life. I really hope at this point you've made something that you're proud of and that looks really cool, and hopefully you've learnt a few new things along the way as well. If you're able to, please do share this with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook with the hashtag QuickLessons, or let me know in the comments below how you got on. And don't forget you can like and subscribe to my channel as well for more Quick Lessons, including the two that are on the screen now. Until next time, see you later!